welcome back. We're getting into some heavier motion graphics work, diving into typography. This is going to be an intro. We're just going to be learning how type works in After Effects and how to um, manipulate it. Then we're going to get into some wilder uh, attributes and fun things that we can do with uh, kinetic type and type in motion and so on. So um, typography is everywhere. It's in still image work. It's in print. It's on billboards. It's on your screen. It's in commercials. It's in movies, um, web banners, video games, you name it. It is everywhere. And as a digital artist, in particular a motion graphics artist, um, we are definitely responsible for the delivery of the word, right? We are spreading the word. And um, it's really critical to get a grasp on solid typography uh, aesthetics, but also understanding um, tempo, timing, rhythm. Uh, these are all things that... Um, as we get started in motion graphics, we tend to take for granted, and we think that often uh, type needs to be on screen for a really <laughs> terribly long time, and that's really not the case. Take a look at these examples. Uh, for instance, this Honda commercial, the text is flying, and we get it, and we're right there. Like, those are not on there for very long. And we are accustomed to this. It's not ideal for like, uh, you know, imagine if the intro to Star Wars, <laughs> instead of the scrolling text that we get the, you know, sort of the, um, the, all the, the information we need to dive into the movie, if it was going word by word like that, um, no. Uh, Potentially, maybe a few things would be uh, digested, but um, nowhere near what you should do. Um, so there are some, some rules and some ways to break those rules. Look at this Apple ad is also sort of the same thing. It's really got great energy. So even that is just, it's flying, but it's, oh, it's got you by the seat of your pants, you know. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's really a fantastic a uh, way to get some hype, get some enthusiasm about an event or a product or, you know, definitely you don't want to look away from the screen because you might miss something. So there's some really interesting ways to um, keep your viewer engaged, deliver the message efficiently and effectively, and also bring energy into it. I'm not saying that everything you do should be flying like that. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. And we'll look into these things as we, as we move through our different um, experiences with typography in After Effects. So first, let's just have a look at how to get type into our compositions. It's super easy. There is a type tool, and it is next to the pen and the paintbrush. So if you just click on that type tool and then click somewhere on screen, I'm just going to click in the middle. Uh, you're going to get a cursor that says, all right, start typing something. So I'll do type. This, um, you, yours may not look like mine because I've been playing with settings and it sort of picks up where the last setting was. Um, but right now I've got, I've got a word on screen and I still have my cursor. This is a good time to get out of the type tool. You can do that a couple of ways. Whoops, that's not the way you want to do it. Let's try this again. <laughs> I hit escape by accident. Um, the best thing to do would just be to grab your selection tool, but you can hit the enter button on your number pad if you have a number pad. If you hit return, it's going to give you a new paragraph line thinking you want to type on the next line down. So very different buttons on your keyboard. Return versus enter. Return, new line, enter. Yeah, I'm cool with this. Let's move on. So um, you can also do things like, oh gosh, click off of the layer. Um, that'll do it. So you know, I'm still in the tech. I'm still in the type tool, so I didn't have to go to my selection tool. But normally, I just go to the selection tool and click off of it. This is a type layer. I can see 
what it says in my layer. I can see that it is a type layer because it has that icon of the T. When I have it selected, I can then you know, move it and position it where I want it. I kind of want this in the center, so I'm going to turn on my, um, my, uh, my safety margins, and that's by hitting the quote key on your keyboard. And that gives me an idea of like what, where my center is, and I can try to get this thing evenly lined up. I'm just gonna use those edges for now. So bam, I know I'm there and I can turn that off. So there is a whole palette just intended for your character information. That means things like the, the font size and your, uh, your letting and the tracking and um, your vertical, horizontal scale, base shift and uh, all that stuff. This is, if you don't see this, it might be collapsed, you might have to open it, or you're going to have to go to Window and choose Character, and that will open up that panel. So here, you can choose all of your different fonts. I'm just sticking with the good old Helvetica, because most everybody has Helvetica, and it's actually, you know, this font has lasted for a reason. Um, bold. Uh, so you can choose whether you want it to be light, or... Um, you know, in italics or oblique. I just like bold right now because we can see it. You can choose your color. So here's your uh, your fill color. You can click on that. It opens up your swatch and you can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to stay with white because it's clean. Um, there are quick jumps to black or white right here. That's what those little buttons are. And then you also have the ability to give it a stroke. So there is a very thin black stroke on my uh, on my word so I'll leave that up for now I'm not a fan of strokes if you haven't noticed already so this is my font size I'm at 600 you know sometimes when you first start it'll be like at 12 <laughs> it's so small you just can't see it maybe that's what you're struggling with right now you might be look like I don't know I can't tell what it says it's so small it's got all these little things on it if I click off of it you can see that this is the tiniest little word type I'm gonna undo that um, so your letting is the space between your lines. I don't have multiple lines right now, but it is, um, it comes from the old original typographers who had to lay out blocks of type on a board and the letting was the space between the lines, but they actually used lead bars and they had different size of lead bars and that would space those type layers apart from each other. There's your history lesson. Um, Tracking, however, is something that you'll be able to see, and tracking is the space between those letters. You can bring them in real close or give them lots of air between them. You can also animate this property over time. You'll learn about that here shortly. Um, and you'll see that if you do bring your tracking in, there is um, a hierarchy of letters where the first letter is on the bottom and so on. You can change that in a setting, and we'll talk about that later too. But... Um, I kind of liked it where I was, somewhere around there. Gosh, if you stare at this word for too long, it doesn't look like a word anymore. Isn't that weird? Let's go back to zero. Bam. Um, so this is your stroke. Weight or width, they call it. And you can see that I can put a pretty heavy stroke on this, and eventually it eats up the type. That is because there are some settings for your stroke, and they are right here. That is stroke overfill, meaning stroke has the visual dominance on top of the fill. You could change that to fill over stroke, and now, no matter what my stroke weight is, my, my letters maintain their integrity without getting washed out by that stroke. But you do see that the stroke will eat up those other letter forms just like we were seeing under the tracking, and that is all fills over all strokes will change that, or you can set all strokes over all fills and then it's just all gone. I never found that to be helpful. And like I said, I'm just not a fan of strokes. Uh, usually, sometimes you need them and that's great, but um, I'm just gonna get rid of that stroke. How do I get rid of it? You click the little no strokes button and then just make sure that your fill is now on top. That way you won't have any mistakes. You do have um, the ability to um, change your vertical scale or your horizontal scale. Okay, listen to me. Here's something that I want you to put into your tool bag. Remember this. Don't stretch or squish your type ever. <laughs> I mean, okay, there are exceptions. But just don't. 
If you're trying to do good design, let the font live as it was originally intended and designed by a designer. They chose the height and the width and the thickness and all that stuff for a reason because they have such great integrity as they stand. The second you start to stretch or squish, you are doing several things. Well, you're ruining the integrity of that wonderful typeface that you're trying to use. And second, it's going to impede upon the recognition or our observance as a viewer of the type that you're giving us. It just doesn't look right and it feels wrong to the viewer. So you just made a pact with me. You're never going to do it. <laughs> Great. Um, and then there's the other things like the baseline shift, which will move you know, you up off of the baseline. You could do that per character or whatever. And then you have some things here where you can like force bold or force italic and all caps and um, whatever. So one more thing to look at is the paragraph panel. The paragraph panel identifies how we are um, arranging our text. And I prefer to work in center when I'm dealing with just single words. Um, it doesn't really matter, but there are some things that uh, will be affected, um, and that is the the anchor point for the type is based on what your paragraph uh, alignment is. So if I chose a left alignment, first of all, it slides it all over because it's keeping it from the original, or it's basing it off the original anchor point, which is here. So now it starts from there. I'd have to move my text over. Um, and, and scale originates from that anchor point. So now if I went back to character and I just started to change the, the type, the character size, you can see that it's going from that anchor point. But if I went back to my center and then changed my character sky, it's, it's going from the center. And that's just, I don't know, it's easier to work with. So um, if you're doing... Um, multi-line work, then the paragraph options for alignment can, can kind of come in handy. Um, and we'll, we'll get there eventually as well. So I've got um, this type layer in my composition. It's, you know, I've, I've sweetened it up, got it however I want it, and, you know, what can you do with it? Well, it does have all of the transform, transform properties that you'd expect another layer to have. So I can you know, definitely have it fly in from the side. <laughs> Whoops, I just changed my entire width. That's the that's one of the issues that I've been having with my stylus lately. So I could have it off to the off screen here and then have it <laughs> fly in, with a little position animation and pop into place, and then it could fly off, <laughs> you know. So these are all things that we have seen um, executed. I'm just hitting undo. That was a lot of undos. I can change the scale of a type layer without having to deal with the character size. Um, that's fine. We can do rotations. And notice it's rotating based off of that lower uh, center anchor point. You still um, can grab that anchor point with the pan behind tool and put it wherever you want. So if you were going to try to, if you were like, we're going to fly into the center of the P and reveal another word, that's kind of a cool thing to do. So now if I hit my scale, we are actually flying into that point where I led, where I left that anchor point, which is um, really kind of fun. I'm going to hold down shift so I can do it at a greater rate. So I could, I could totally hide a word inside of that P and move into something else as we reveal just by going through you know, some scale changes or, I mean, it'd be a little more choreography than that, but I like the idea. And then you have opacity, so you can have things fade in, fade out, blink over time. Um, what you would normally expect from the transform. But notice there is another area called text, and this has a little twirl down uh, arrow, and um, you can do lots of things in here. Right now, I see that there's a source text and it only has a stopwatch icon. There is no attributes there. The attribute is the word itself. So um, this is kind of cool. This, this can be neat. 
Um, if I click that stopwatch and start recording, you'll see it lays a keyframe into the timeline. However, that keyframe is not a diamond, it's a square. This is a hold keyframe, which means you will not see any change in value until you see another keyframe, and then it's just gonna change. So there's no like tweening or morphing, uh, fading, movement, it's just a change. So that means if I went to uh, frame five and changed my, I'm gonna get my type tool, my word to is, and then went to frame 10, notice it just recorded a keyframe for me. I just changed the word again, new keyframe, I'll go to this frame here. I'm gonna use the word rad. If I scroll over this, you can see that type is super rad. <laughs> and it's just changing my character value. Oh, this reminds me of those samples I showed you at the beginning of the movie that Honda used and Apple used. And look, you just learned how to do that. Type is super rad. I'm gonna change my workspace, my work area to be only this long. I haven't shown you this yet. I'm gonna, this is a little, eh, Side note, my work area is this bar along the ruler, the time ruler, that has a blue um, in and out point. And you can change those in and out points. You can grab the out point and slide it in to wherever you want. So I want like one second. And now when I hit space bar, it's only going to play that one second in a loop. Type it super red. Type it super red. <laughs> super red. Type it super red. That's pretty fun. So, um, that way I don't have to render and watch five seconds when only my animation is in under one second. So that's your work area. That's handy. But now you can see that type is super rad. All I had to do was initiate the keyframing for source text and then just change what that source text is. Um, we do have path options. We'll get into that in a different video. And we have more options where you can um, be dealing with how some of the attributes uh, that we will affect later on will be affected either by characters, lines, or words, etc. cetera. So, um, so that is type in a nutshell, okay? Um, even without getting into crazy animation, let's do this. Let's just get rid of those. What if I wanted to do type is super rad but have it all on screen at the same time? I would let's make this a little smaller, and I'm going to put it up here type and then I want another one to pop on how about I duplicate that layer command D or edit duplicate now I've got another version of the same text so I don't have to get into recreating it it's maybe I want to come off of that's kind of fun type is I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants right now I'm gonna duplicate that maybe I want to do that well, I have to make it super first. It's now super. And where did I have you? You were really working a little bit earlier. Well, it's fine. Okay, great. I'm going to duplicate that. Bring that down. This is now going to be red. And you'll be... Where are you going to be? off of the P. You'll share that line. It'll be close enough. All right, so now I have all of these up at the same time, but what if I want them to go do, 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 and pop on screen? Well, that's just in point changes. So at five frames, I will move my is to that. At 10 frames, I will move my super to that time. And then at frame 15, I will move my red. And now what I have is, in fact, I'm gonna move them all over five. There we go. I just actually, I didn't change the endpoints there. I just grabbed them all and moved them in time. Type is super rad. Type is super rad. So this is a way to get type on screen too without having to really do a lot. Is this really great? No. <laughs> I could make that a lot better, but I'm just trying to prove a point. Type is super rad. That's my point. So there's something really easy where I'm delivering type onto screen, but I'm just changing 
the you know I'm arranging the composition so that it's something that is you know intriguing, interesting, and I can follow. But I'm also bringing these words on sequentially in order. That is really helpful for anyone who's going to be trying to read your work. Think about that. Don't have rad and then is and then super and type come on in that order it'd be really kind of jarring for us to figure out what the message is so just think about how we read and and <laughs> keep that into our flow all right that's all i'm going to cover right now i want you to play around with that first and then we're going to get into um, some actual character animation which really gets sweet and there are a lot of options out there and kind of um, could get overwhelming don't let your typography be overwhelming Keep it clean, tidy, think about finesse, think about control, and think about communication. Those are our jobs as designers, okay? Awesome. Thanks a lot, and uh, see you soon.